You're watching KBFT with Heather Kennedy, Robbie Scherer, and Kristen Miller on sports. KBFT starts now. Hello there, CB. I'm Rob Scher. And I'm Heather Kennedy. As I'm sure many of you know, last Friday's dance was a great success. The homecoming dance had a huge turnout. We here at KBFT would like to thank everyone involved with making the dance happen and hope everyone had a great time. In club news for this week, the following clubs have meetings. Athletic Student Council has a meeting today at lunch in room 802. On Thursday, the Independent Film Club will be meeting during the long lunch in room 603. Finally, dance club members, do not forget to turn in your permission forms and money to Miss Mungus by Thursday. Attention varsity baseball players, it's time to start training for your new season. Please report to the weight room today at 315 to begin your training. Training will be every Tuesday and Thursday at 315. Please come in your workout attire. If you have any questions, call Coach Lowry at 916-849-3689. Well, today the Internet is a vast pool of resources with many different types of research sites. Some of them are more credible than others, but how can you tell the difference? I went down to the library to find out which ones students can trust. I see you're using the computers. What source are you using to gather your information? Uh, I like Google and uh, Wikipedia. It's pretty cool. Well, I generally start with a Google search. It's got a cool name, and uh, it's just there. I mean, it's easy. Wikipedia always has great pictures. Um, it's usually dependable. Um, a lot of times it isn't, though. There's always that doubt there that uh, you might be reading the wrong thing. In response to worries about the credibility of online sources, the library has purchased search engines for databases usable by CB students. We interviewed the librarians, Ms. H and Mr. Doak, for more information about this new addition to our campus. We've got quite a few new databases here at the library for all the students to use, and one of the best things about it, there are two really special things about it. One is you can use it from home as well as at school, and the second thing is that all of them are vetted, they're all checked for accuracy, et cetera, unlike the open web. ProQuest is for periodicals of all kinds, newspapers, magazines, in fact, scholastic journals. The others are, we have uh, issues and controversies. Uh, we have one for multimedia that you can download both uh, movies as well as music. So we have a variety of them. First off, they are uh, usable from home, which is helpful. But I know that Google, Wikipedia, those are also available from home. But the thing is, these are academically vetted. That means that they are okay to cite in a newspaper, in a research paper, as opposed to Wikipedia, which is done by non-authorities, or Google, where you can actually get a freshman in college's paper. And all of our databases are author authoritative, academically useful. So there you have it. While Wikipedia and Google are great search engines, they shouldn't be used for research papers when the librarians have gone to great lengths to provide you with credible online databases. This has been Rob Sheriff for KBFT Sacramento. <laughs> Permission slips for Christian Service Corps and any students helping with the delivery of the Thanksgiving food drive donations are due today. Turn them in to Mr. Benedetti Emanuel in the Christian Service Center. The Science Department's annual service learning project, the Thanksgiving Food Drive, will be taking place until November 17th. All proceeds will benefit St. Francis Terrace, a housing complex for low-income people run by the Sisters of Mercy. If you are not taking a science class but would like to donate, Please bring your donations to the Christian Service Center. All donations are greatly appreciated. The Frosch Family Liturgy is this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. in the gym, followed by a continental breakfast. Frosch, remind your parents to send in their RSVP to the main office this week. If you are involved in the liturgy, remember you have to arrive at the gym at 8.30 that morning. Don't forget to wear appropriate dress for liturgy. Up next, the students of Christian Brothers High School want to take you back in time to the 50s for a sweet summer of summer lovin'. Summer lovin'. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this.
Arizona State University will be holding an information session today at Sunnyvale, California from 7 to 9 p.m. The session is located at the Sheraton Sunnyvale 1100 North Mathilda Ave. If you're interested, you can RSVP at the website below. There is an essay writing contest for high school students on Anne Rand's books. Ninth and 10th graders will be writing an essay on Anthem and 11th and 12th graders on The Fountainhead. The entry deadline for Anthem is March 20th, 2007 and The Fountainhead on April 25th, 2007. For more information, visit the website below. The Council for America's First Freedom will be holding its 14th annual First Freedom Student Competition. This first semester national essay contest offers 9th through 12th grade students an opportunity to compete for $3,000, $1,500, and $750 awards as they examine their First Amendment and the history and relevance of religious freedom in America and the world today. Go to the website below to learn more details on, on the topic, competition guidelines and registration. California State University Dominguez Hills has its open house on Saturday, November 18th. Check-in time is from 9.30 a.m. until 10 a.m. The actual event lasts from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Information and online registration are available at the website below. The 2007 SAE Engineering Scholarships applications are now available in Brother Edward Hall. Remember, to be eligible, application, applicants must be a high school senior and intend to earn a degree in engineering or a related science. Applications must be postmarked by December 1st. If you have any questions, please visit the website below. KCB, this is Christian Miller here with another edition of KBFT Sports News. Well, this Friday, our CV cross-country teams had their section meet up in Folsom, and our team ran extremely well. We sent Emily Clemens to find out more. Hi, I'm Emily Clemens with some exciting Christian Brothers cross-country news. It was announced on Friday that for the first time in the history of CV cross-country, both the men's and women's varsity team qualified for the state meet. But what is cross country? Cross country is very different than track. Seven to ten miles. Three to six miles. Five to two miles, two miles. This entire sport is just running. Last Friday we had sections, and in sections they take the top three teams out of eight teams, and the top five runners, and Christian Brothers girls team was third, so that's how we made it to state. Christian Brothers has a really great cross country team. The varsity team has been excellent this year. During track, we run around the track, and it's kind of repetitive, but in cross country, we get an opportunity to run on grass, golf courses, horse trails. Most of the runners do either two or three mile races. Uh, nobody does anything less than that, and they're competing against an incredible number of schools. Sometimes there's 100 per race, uh, sometimes even more than that. Uh, the night before, we usually carbo load or drink a lot of water and um, you just practice a lot throughout the entire week with different practices that pinpoint certain uh, speeds or distances that you need to be able to do for the meets. Um, well, we'll be doing some more workouts this week and we've had a lot of preparation early in the season and during the summer, so we'll be doing some hard workouts this week. I've heard of regionals, but other than that, really nothing, nothing else. Just state meet and then it's over, basically. This has been Emily Clemens reporting for KBFT, Sacramento. Good luck, guys. We're on the state! Yeah! The boys' team, led by George Cook Cantu and Johnny Soto, placed second in the section as a team. Meanwhile, the girls placed third behind the top ten performances of Kelly McInerney and Katie Hulse. They will be competing in the state meet for the first time in the school's history. The meet is in Fresno over Thanksgiving weekend, and we wish the team the best of luck. Our football team was not so lucky on Friday as they received a couple of questionable calls on their way to a tough 23-14 loss. Asa Jackson had two long touchdown runs called back on penalties and an acrobatic catch by Larry Morla on the fourth down in the end zone, in the end zone was ruled incomplete. However, the Falcons showed a lot of heart and the outlook is bright for next year as 22 players return to the varsity team. They will be accompanied by a strong JV team, which will be moving up to varsity next year after an 8-2 and two record this year. They finished up their season with a 21-7 win over Oak Ridge on Friday. Well, today our volleyball team, who is ranked number two in the Division IV bracket, has a huge match at home versus number three, Somerville. 
If they win, they will play the championship match on Thursday at UC Davis against either Ripon or Golden Sierra. Finally, baseball conditioning starts today in the weight room. Well, that's it for me. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. Well, that's it for today, CB. Remember to stay tuned for the full interview of our visual and performing arts department on Sacramento & Company. We'll see you on Friday. Tell us a little bit about this show. How long have you guys been in the works, planning, practicing, singing? How long Dancing. does it take to do a musical? Uh, Anybody, anyone. jump in. Feel Our free anytime. Open. We have we, five minutes. We auditioned as soon as we got back uh, from summer vacation, right when we came back in August. We did the auditions, uh, cast the show, and started rehearsing. And so it, it takes probably two, two and a half months to get things put together. How, who auditions for this?